you change the language of agents and make them more effective? That is exactly what we're going to discuss in this video, where if you know how agents communicate in the large language models realm, can we make some change to that in such a way that the agents are more effective? We're going to see a paper called Executable Code Actions Elicit Better LLM Agents. But before we jump into the paper, I would like to give you a very brief overview of what happens in the agent world currently and what this paper actually proposes. After that, we are going to jump into the paper in itself. They've also shared a model with us. So we're going to then see the model couple of demos and what makes this particular model work fine with the agents. To start with, if you are familiar with agents as a concept, the current regular agents, you have two important components. One is the LLM that you use. The second one is one of kind of a tool. So it could be a calculator, it could be a web search engine, it could be a function, it could be anything. So there is an LLM and there are some of these things. So that's what we see here. So you have an LLM and then you have a couple of tools. So the way the LLM and tools communicate is either through text or through JSON. And shortly we'll see another example. So you either send a text or you send a JSON file and that the tool kind of gets the message and then does something. This is how current LLMs look like. What this paper ideally proposes us is to completely move away from that kind of an interface and then say that, okay, an LLM is supposed to produce an executable Python code, which ideally will get executed in an executable environment. And that output is what is going to happen or what going to communicate with the tool. So basically the Python code interfaces with the tool. And with that, this is going to be a much more effective LLM agent. And that is the claim that this paper is making and the agents or the system that they have put together is called code act. So I hope you have some understanding difference about what happens in regular setup. We communicate or the LLMs communicate with tools using text or JSON. And this paper completely says that get away with languages because we are humans. We speak in text. That's how text started. But the systems, the computers or the tools that we have got do not have to speak the same language. Rather, they can speak code language and you can send an executable code to make this much more effective LLM agent system. So how are they doing it? If you see how are they doing it, the uh, most important thing is uh, the innovation that they are bringing in here is to make the executable Python code. So they have got an executable Python code and that code you know, consolidates the LLM agents actions. So it, it takes the LLM agents actions into a unified action space and that action space or this system is what they call as code act. And they've done some good analysis and as part of their good analysis, they are saying that their system has 20% higher success rate and we're going to see how it is. Now to see the same example that we just saw with slightly lesser abstraction, we have a system and uh, we have a couple of uh, tools or APIs available for us, the lookup rate and the convert and tax, estimate final price, lookup phone price, estimate shipping cost. So as you can see here, uh, you can understand that you are trying to calculate currency rate or shipping cost or something like that. So that is the concept here. So the instruction given to the LLM is determine or the agent in this case is determine the most cost effective country to purchase smartphone model. This is a smartphone model. The countries to consider are USA, Japan, Germany and India. So this is the instruction that you have given and these are the tools or available APIs for the LLMs to use. In a conventional LLM, what happens when you use text and JSON to communicate for, for a driving an action, you can see first the LLM things and then it comes up with, uh, so, okay, so there are a couple of things that they need to know here. So one is what tool to use. So you need to use lookup rate here and what country for Germany and then it does it for Germany and then it calculates, gets it back and then it does it for other countries. And you can see that, you know, it's first of all, it is making more number of calls. And second of all, it's not probably the most effective solution that you can see here. So some of it gives you the response back in the new world, in the code act world, the LLM agent is using code as an action. So it's, it's using code to communicate. And it says, I, I should calculate the phone price in USD for each country, then find the most effective country. This is what is LLM thinking or LLM coming up with as a goal. And in turn, it creates this Python code. As you can see here, this code has a couple of items. One, it can do more than one at the same time because you have a list of countries. 
The second thing is it also has got controls and uh, data flow. So this is one very important part of any programming language. You can easily have control on data flow because you can control that. So for every country you are going to do this and then see and then get the final one and then do it. And why this is very important is because when you see this, there are two things that will immediately stand out for you. One, you can see that they've used data flow of the code. So complex operations with control and data flow, you can make it better. And this is fundamentals of programming language. The second thing is you can see that they've used minimum price and minimum it's, it's a function. It's part of Python programming language in this case. And that is another advantage here. So you don't have to teach your agents or like the JSON, whatever you write for a certain aspects, rather you are now giving access to the entire Python ecosystem just by integrating the code act because it's going to spit out Python code that is executable. So these are like a couple of advantages. But if you see here, the another important aspect is it did not take so many actions to come up with the decision finally. So in this case, you can see do it for Germany, 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 and then do it for Japan. And then you do it for other country. Then you do it for other country. Then you do it for other country. And then finally you have the final output here. In this case, it did not have to do that. So it is just like one action, uh, one set, and then it can do that. I mean, you can argue that still it goes through the for loop. So if it is an API, it's going to make four calls, but still it is not different to and fro back and fro between LLM and agent for each set. Rather, it's just one call four times that is happening. So it makes a huge difference in terms of how you do what you do. And anytime you are productionizing agent, you would know one of the biggest problems with productionizing agent is um, like the logging and code traceability part of it. And thanks to code act, you can also do that. So in short, what are the benefits that you have got with code act, which is code as an action item rather than using JSON or text. So one, you have got large code quantity available for pre-training. We know most of these elements are pretty good with code. Why it is important? It is important because at the end of the day, you're trying to just create a code rather than telling what tool your LLM to use. So you're not making for tool specific LLM knowledge rather than the code is fine. So data curation required in a particular format is difficult here like JSON. Rather, uh, the data is already available. Code is already available part of most pre-training data sets. So you're pretty sorted. For complex operations uh, such as, you know, looping composition of tools, programming language natively supports control and data flow while with LLM using JSON or text, you cannot do it. You have to carefully engineer it. Available of tools. This is a, probably the biggest advantage. Imagine the amount of Python packages. Imagine the amount of API bindings that are available for Python. It is enormous. It is unbelievable. You can control your home with Python. You can control your car with Python. You can do uh, take solar battery power with Python. You can do like so many different things with Python. Like you name a thing, probably there's a Python library. And that is the biggest advantage that this particular framework brings. On the other hand, if you are using JSON or text for communication or action, then probably you need to curate that and then write it for that. And the most important thing is automatic feedback. You have tracebacks available already because of programming language. You can see what happens. If you want to do login, you can log very easily. While uh, here, uh, it might be very unstructured and you have to do certain things by yourself to get that response back. Of course, you're going to do it if you're going to productionize it, but using a programming language as a mode of communication for action makes it much, much easier. Uh, I'm not going to go deeper into this paper. I would strongly encourage you to read the paper. But if you see a very quick another example with this full architecture here, you can see the user comes and says, okay, find the sum of reciprocals of roots on this. And the assistant immediately sees this is a problem. The assistant creates a code with execute here. And now that is a very important aspect that they have brought in. This is a special kind of token does not usually exist in a lot of other LLMs. So this is one thing that they've brought in. So I'm going to take you quickly to the live demo that they have put together. And if you see in the system prompt, you can see the casual start chat template and uh, the assistant can interact with an interactive Python Jupyter notebook environment and receive corresponding outputs when needed. The code should be enclosed using execute tag. For example, like this, the assistant should attempt fewer things, blah, blah, blah. So as you can see here, there is a special token that is also at play to make sure this is a code block and the code block should get executed within the Jupyter notebook environment. 
and they have also released the code for you if you want to go use the code so executable code actions elicit better llm agents the entire code is available here for you to use it you can see the demo as well but i'm going to quickly show you the demo so this is the demo that they have added here so right now there is some issue with this uh, package installation in this demo but if we were to do something without installing the package i can say draw a line plot a line plot with random numbers so when you say this thing it is not just going to give you code as a result like most other python code it is also going to execute because as you can see here at this point it has triggered that special token for executing the code and it is going to run the code and uh, yeah some error currently is happening but as you can see this is how it basically works let me use one of the examples that they've given here draw a line plot okay cool it's writing the code. I'm not sure if it is going to execute. There's some execution engine issue was there, but you know, this demo actually works. Uh, so let's come back here after a while. And as you can see here, now this is the framework that you have got. You have got the outcome, whatever the result is, the feedback or whatever it is that comes from code act. And that is where you have the environment where the code can get executed. And part of this, you can have web browsing, information seeking, software packages, internal and external memory and if you want to connect it to like robots or something you can do it this at the core is this agent and uh, you have got like certain planning things that you wanted to do like for example when you say something here uh, you want it to plan so uh, as you can see with this example you want the llm to plan this thing so that is something that is very critical and you have got all these other components observation then you have got a uh, think after you think and plan and do this thing action and then that goes to code act and uh, the conversation with user happens in natural language while the conversation with the agent or the environment happens in code act, which is the code for action, uh, which is unified action space. And uh, yeah, you get the final result that makes you further happy. One more thing that I wanted to show you, which also is probably slightly beyond what this video is supposed to do is if you see the success rate one, of course, obviously you can see the code as action as the higher success rates, like for example, if you take GPT-4 1106 uh, preview, this one, the code one has more than 70% success rate while using JSON has somewhere around 50% success rate. So out of box, you get 20% success rate. The other thing that you can notice is uh, this also accelerates how much you can do with open models. Like for example, if you take an open model like a Llama to 70 billion chat model with JSON and text as action, so you get very minimal success rate while using this you have literally more than doubled the success rate when you use open models so i would be looking forward to test this out with much more older uh, open models in and itself and like i said as part of this they have also released a model in itself so if you go to their demo you can see here they have fine-tuned the mistral model and created a code act agent model if there is enough interest i'll try to put together a separate tutorial about how you can use this model and get some meaningful responses Overall, this is a very interesting direction. A lot of people have been asking this question. Okay, we are humans, we understand language, but language is quite complicated even for humans. Sometimes when somebody says like this movie is, um, let's say, cracked, I don't know whether they mean it is good, whether they mean it is bad, like a lot of subtle nuances that human beings use. So it's very hard to sometimes understand from plain text. So people have been proposing that AI doesn't have to communicate with the language that we communicate between themselves. They can have their own code and all the other things. So this paper seems to be taking us to that particular direction and also shows empirically proving that with LLMs using code or react, whatever that is called as an action point, you can improve LLM agents. I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know in the comment section what you feel about it. See you in another video. Happy prompting.